Bastet is a goddess from ancient Egypt, and many pagans honor her in their practice. We often think of her as the cat goddess. Bastet was a goddess of fertility, motherhood, and the protector of the home. Women and children are her domain, and she is thought to have the ability to protect both from diseases and illnesses. Bastet, or Bast, was worshipped as early as the Second Dynasty, 2890 BCE. In ancient Greek religion, she is also known as Eleros, Greek for cat. She is mentioned in the texts written in the early pyramids and in the funeral coffin texts. There is some controversy among ancient Egyptologists about the relationship between Bastet and Sekhmet. Most scholars believe they are different goddesses with some similar traits. The term counterpart or possibly sister is more apt. I took a graduate course on ancient Egypt and my professor explained that they originated in different time periods and areas of Egypt. Bast is a much older goddess appearing to us in the second dynasty in lower Egypt. She is also a kinder, more benevolent goddess. Cats were often painted or sculpted on tomb walls. Ancient Egyptians felt the cat's ability to see in the dark protected them from evil as they ward off these unnatural predators. This was one reason many kept cats as pets. Cats and Egyptians built a strong relationship when Egyptian farmers learned to cultivate wheat and barley. Rodents carrying disease often invaded storage areas. Cats became a natural rodent aside. These are my two cats, Pixie and Gidget, being their typical regal selves. As Bastet is the cat goddess, the most obvious sign that she's connecting with you is the presence of cats, literally or figuratively. For instance, you might find that you are being followed by cats, that you find a stray that feels like yours, or that you see cats wherever you go. There might be cats around in less obvious forms, too. The page of a book opens to a picture or section on cats, for example, or maybe somebody gives you a piece of jewelry with a feline image. I have a little video I did of my Bastet altar. Just a reminder that your altar is your own and reflects what is important for you. I have an article on the website that has a list of ideas and we'll, we'll list that in the description. So I just wanted to share with you the altar I put together to honor Bastet. Uh, the pitcher is moon water, which I always have on my, my altar. I have orange and yellow candles. Uh, they represent the sun, and she is a goddess, uh, the daughter of Ra, uh, so a sun goddess. Um, yellow is also good for wisdom and learning, and orange is great for new opportunities, um, confidence. Uh, so I have a picture in the back. Um, that is one of my ancestor cats. Uh, that was Percy. And so I have that picture here to honor him. I also have my Native American flute. And, and down here I have a little bell. Uh, Bastet loves music, loves dancing. And so things, uh, music, um, instruments, um, honor her on the altar as well. Uh, I have a bottle of perfume. Uh, so Bastet is also the goddess of per perfume an offering of water. You can easily do wine, um, whatever you would like. I have some lentils. The ancient Egyptians grew lentils and some honey. What goddess doesn't love honey? Um, I have uh, a little altar cloth. Uh, that's kittens. It was just a find at um, probably Michael's or Joanne's. I don't even remember which one. I also have uh, white and black candles. Um, black, as you know, is great for protection, and she is the goddess of protect protecting families and women especially. 
Black is also a great candle uh, if you're healing or fighting off disease, which Bastet is also um, known for. And then, of course, a white candle. I have some rose petals. Of course, other herbs or flowers that would be great for her would be catnip and uh, lemon balm. Lemon balm is the other one that's also very good for her. I have a couple of things to honor her as um, a hunter. My asthma, a knife, and um, I have a couple of projectile points just to symbolize the hunting and um, my Native American spirituality. Bastet uh, loves turquoise. Turquoise is, of course, um, a very peaceful um, stone, a very protective stone. And a uh, citrine um, also uh, is great for Bastet. And you could also put meat on your altar. What cat doesn't like meat? Um, she especially loves fish and chicken. I have two cats uh, living in my home, so I don't necessarily do the uh, putting meat out uh, because then I'd uh, be inviting them uh, to be on the altar, which might not be a bad thing. But I light my candles, I can sing a song, I can lift up a prayer to honor Bastet and, you know, communicate with her in that way. Let her know that um, I honor her and let her know that I'm open to her um, wisdom and her advice and whatever she um, wants to share with me. Light my candles. One of the best ways to honor Bastet is through music and dance. In fact, the Bast Festival, which was held in ancient Egypt to celebrate the goddess, was a riot of music, movement, and merrymaking. Said to be attended by more than 700,000 people, her festival certainly one of the most popular. During this event, women would dance and sing and participate in a ritual known as the lifting of the skirts, essentially displaying their genitalia for all to see. Whether this was to represent women breaking free of restraints or, as other sources suggest, to celebrate their fertility, it is not truly known. In keeping with her love of dancing and music, you could sing your petition to Bastet at her altar, and even incorporate dancing as you sing or chant the words. I have a video on Sekhmet and one on the cat spirit animal that will interest you as well. Please let me know in the comments any thoughts on future videos. Please give this video a thumbs up so that other people will find it as well. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a very witchy day.